begin the start the meeting at uh, 6.33. Um, I think we have a very specific um, agenda for this evening, but uh, are there any other agenda items that someone would like to add before we begin the meeting? Hearing none, we'll proceed. I'm uh, sorry, just took me a second there, Peter uh, Adam from Deerfield Police. I just, uh, Chris had sent an email last week. I was out of the country. I got back to him this morning and I just, um, his email kicked back a few times. Chris, did you get my email? Um, I did I did not, um, uh, but I don't know where you're gonna go on this one, Adam, but also, the friends of Deerfield wanted to open a board meeting at the same time in case we may need to decide anything during this meeting. Okay. Um, so Alex, could you open that board meeting? Uh, so I guess I will call the friends of Deerfield meeting to order at 634. And it looks like um, Chris, myself, Stan are here. Um, Chris, do you want me Marie? to try to copy and paste that email to a text to you? Yeah, you can do that on my phone right beside. Okay. All right, I will try to do that here. Okay. I can't tell what's going on, but I just lost everybody on the screen. Anybody got any suggestions? Keep talking. We can hear you. And we yeah, can we see can you. Yeah, yeah, I see a great big zoom on my meeting on my screen. That's all I'm saying. Well, don't pick your nose, Peter, because we can see you. <laughs> oh, you can see me? Oh, Where, how about now? Can you see me now? No. no. <laughs> I, think, I think, Peter, it's just a bandwidth issue. It'll recover as, as a cat. So you'll come back on soon huh. with everybody else. Okay. Well, uh, do we have minutes to, I guess we have minutes to approve. We're not doing minutes, Peter. We're only doing the special topics. Oh, that's right. Okay, so we'll begin with fireworks update then on the agenda. Okay, since we are all waiting for a snowstorm, um, I can report that the peregrine falcons have not nested as of March 1st and probably will not nest for another two weeks. So DCR um, off of Mount Sugarloaf Fireworks is no longer a possibility because the uh, falcon um, nest, nest, not, you know, the nestlings wouldn't have a chance to, the chicks wouldn't have a chance to mature before our fireworks. So um, <clears throat> looking at the sites, in, um, we have Deerfield Academy site is probably our number one site. And I can turn it over to Chris Harris who has ha actually had the um, fireworks people come down and, and look at a few different sites. Yeah, so um, so the, the problem with other South Deerfield sites is because of proximity of buildings, residencies, rail and roads, we can't get the clearance that we need, the safety clearance. So, um, so we turned to two sites up in uh, Old Deerfield where we, Recently, there have been fireworks, um, and we learned more about those recent ones that we didn't know even before then. And so then last week, we uh, quickly went into motion. Fireworks company came down with in contact with the uh, chief of uh, Old Deerfield Fire District and facilities people, and they looked at sites up on Eagle Brook and down in the south playing field, South Meadows at Deerfield Academy. Um, and they issued a report uh, that came out um, Thursday morning. And um, it was definitive that they really favored the site in the South playing fields along the Deerfield River. Uh, at Deerfield Academy, it's really very far south uh, on their campus. Um, and um, and the, the, the rationale they gave was, they had suitable safety, uh, easy setup, uh, and they could do a more spectacular and more sophisticated show um, from that perspective versus the Eagle Brook, where they would have to go to heights more than anything else just to get it above 
um, the, the tree line um, and uh, it still wouldn't go above the top of the ridge, the Crumptick Ridge. But, um, and so, so that was the recommendation. And we have that map, that site map in front of Deerfield Academy right now. And it appears the feedback from Deerfield Academy on that specific issue is that yes, we've actually had fireworks down in that area. Um, and they've always been successful. I thought they were in the North Meadows, but in fact, they've been in the South, I guess. Um, and so it, we, we expect Deerfield Academy to say, we're fine with that plan. The chief of fire is fine with it. The fire marshal is expected to approve of that based on past surveys he's done of Deerfield. Um, the one thing that Kristen mentioned is that if we have drought conditions, that is also the most favorable site um, because we would have still have the ability to have the fireworks. We would not have to cancel the fireworks. Um, and and the biggest thing, I guess, in my um, that impressed me was that we could use the six inch shells or the six inch two kind of fireworks versus at Eagle Brook, we'd only have the four inch. Um, so it's it would be a much better display to do the bigger bigger fireworks. Do you know what uh, crops are going to be in the adjacent field to the south by any chance? Um, it's it's Deerfield Deerfield Academy owns the property all the way. Um, yeah, so the so the no zone, fire. the overlap safety zone, um, Peter actually wouldn't even encroach on the southernmost playing fields of Deerfield Academy, and beyond that would either be potatoes or sod. But we're not even anywhere near that. Yeah, I was just curious because of, just because of access. I mean, if they were growing corn and you had to get trucks in there, you could have a problem. But you know that low vegetation stuff it just makes it easier. It's all, it's all on. Um, in this case, it's all going to be on grass fields or overarching canopy along the river. Um, and um, if worst comes to worst, we could irrigate the grass fields at the last moment. Okay, so what uh, what are the final tasks that need to be uh, sort of wrapped up? You're just waiting for the uh, fire marshal's report and, and Deerfield Academy's okay. Is that uh, sort of where we are? So so the way uh, so so the way this would unfold is we just need a final go ahead by Deerfield Academy. They would need to send a simple letter to us saying that that zone is acceptable to them as property owner. Um, and then uh, we, Friends of Deerfield, would sign a final contract that would be tailored towards that zone, of course. And um, uh, and then um, and then every every and then the contract would include the fireworks company dealing with the local. Uh, chief of fire, as well as the state fire marshal, getting all the permits in place, and it would also cover the the rain dates that would be established for that weekend. Saturday the seventeenth, the most logical rain date would be Sunday the eighteenth. In this case, because of the holiday weekend, sure. so they would pull permits that would cover the 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 rain dates also. Okay. And we're way ahead of the game in doing that at this point. We we would be ahead of normal timetables. Well, it sounds like you've you've got all the people that were involved already notified. So they should, if they have any question, you'd expect that they would have raised them already. Do we need to vote in support of what Chris is doing? Or we just let them go? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I'll entertain a motion. I mean, that's it's for. It's probably the cleanest thing. So I, I, I don't mind making a motion to approve the fireworks. Carolyn, I got a few things before oh, you sure. take your vote. Okay, you let's want. discuss first. So uh, I just sent my email. I don't know to Chris. Uh, came back. I sent it via text. Um, so, you know, the chief and I spoke this morning. Um, I spoke briefly with Chris McDougall at Deerfield Academy. 
Um, and, you know, I don't know is what their status is or when they're going to give a final okay. So um, they're very concerned about parking and issues. They have 29 teams coming in for a squash tournament that creates um, a number of extra people on their campus throughout that weekend. They've already committed to historic Deerfield to run an antique show. So they're a little bit concerned. Um, and I haven't got, and Chris is not the top of the food chain there. Uh, Chris McDougall, their director of safety and security. And <clears throat> the chief and I have some serious concerns about where we're going to put cars that weekend and adding an additional event in Old Deerfield on the 17th. Uh, on top of the chicken barbecue. So, um, you know, the, the chief and I spoke today. We understand that South Deerfield now has a limited or non viable options for fireworks at this point in time, but we thought maybe to continue the year long celebration, uh, fireworks around Thanksgiving weekend might be a great idea to do them off Sugarloaf then after the. Falcons have gone. It's earlier in the evening. It's less disruptive to pets and families. And a lot of people come home that weekend. So um, we just, I just wanted to add that in. Um, you know, it all depends on attendance and weather and weather and parking in Old Deerfield are a challenge. If it's dry and drought conditions, there's a lot of options, a lot more options. Um, if it's wet and the grass is unavailable, that presents additional challenges. Adam? Yes. Uh, these, these events will be daytime. The soccer and the antique show will be daytime. Squash turn. Oh, oh, okay. The, the, the antique show usually runs until six o'clock at night. I, I haven't got the full details on that. I would like think I said, the I, crowds would be dispersed to some capacity. Um, so the, so the, by the antique by show. By the time it's dark. The antique show okay. runs from 10 to 6 on Saturday and mm -hmm. from 10 to 5 on Sunday. Right. The squash tournament will peak obviously on Saturday mm -hmm. because it's it's winnowing down. Sunday there'll still be competitions, but it'll be narrowing down on the finalists, et cetera. But it seemed like based on our Thursday meeting with Deerfield Academy, they were most concerned about parking and population on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I haven't had time, you know based on the late you know the notice and, I, and i'm not here to say you know it's not you know we, we don't feel so we can support it but we have also you know those are concerns and i want to be up front with those concerns to the committee as a whole and 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 to your point and i i breathed through your text here adam thank you very much for that um i did reach out to bvma today and alerted them to the fact that we have these competing events going on in Old Deerfield on Saturday and Sunday and inquiring as to whether we might be able to get access to some of their parking. Again, some of that's dependent on how soggy the lawn is, et cetera. Um, and uh, so because of the storm and everything, I don't expect to hear back from Tim until the end of the week. Mm -hmm. In terms of what he has going, and whether he sees that as a viable option for yeah, and I guess the only the only other question is why uh, Frontier wasn't explored for post parade events. Um, you know, the parade ends near Frontier. Um, the chief recommended that to Sue drew drew a map. Um, you know, it's just there's three parking lots available at Frontier between adding the elementary school. Um, there's fencing there that you can control traffic. There's bleachers there for a band. There's lights if they're available. Um, and you know, that's, that was our recommendation in the fall. Uh, we stand by that as the best option for after parade fest festivities. Um, and, 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 um, and yes, that was always the thought of course. And, um, the, um, the issue is that for when fireworks were not a possibility on, uh, Mount Sugarloaf. We don't have the safety coverage on any of the sites we identified in South Deerfield. And I actually had that double check with measurements today. It's the rail line, it's it's buildings, it's commercial buildings that are out. Oh, no, I understand. I mean, we've set fireworks off from where there's buildings now, you know, where yep. you know years ago there wasn't buildings. And we understand that. And um, you know, it's a it's a it's definitely a challenge with the fireworks, but um, you know, we'll see, 
what happens with with Deerfield Academy and the parking and and stuff moving forward. I think yeah, the, 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 the other practical aspect of post parade was that we were planning to have some of the same kids events and setups, which requires some professional setup and takedown. Mm -hmm. We were planning on doing that near near the chicken barbecue on Sunday, mm -hmm. and it's easier to do that same setup for Saturday evening and Sunday rather than move it from South Deerfield up there in terms of cost and logistics. Yep, absolutely. Well, um, I just want to um, emphasize um, what Adam said. I think the notion was uh, we were trying to have a balance between the villages um, and I applaud Friends of Deerfield for the chicken barbecue idea. I think it's fabulous and I think that's going to be a, a really great fit for Sunday, but moving every other element of post parade to Old Deerfield. I mean, some people don't do fireworks, but would enjoy another aspect of celebrating at the end of the parade. And now I feel as if the South Deerfield Village is going to have the parade and you know, from the get go, the plan was to have something down in the village area. Um, and I, I think it's unfortunate. And even if we had to scale back fireworks, if we could have get got, got permission, I think it would have been nice to have some continuity. Um, but you know, and and also the fact that there's going to be um, children's activities on Sunday. All of that originally was supposed to be on Saturday in South Deerfield. Um, that was the plan when Sue Antonellis met with um, the 350 group and previously with our parade work group. So I'm just, um, I know it's going to work out, but it wouldn't have been my choice. And I just want to state my opinion. Thanks, Holly. Hey, Chris, one of the things uh, did, I know having drive, driving that back road down by the fields fairly regularly, there's often a setup of tents and parking on the east side of that road, just beyond the entrance going into those big fields. I don't know who owns those fields, but uh, there's a fairly, it's all grassed and um, it's used on a fairly regular basis for setting up large tents and parking cars. So it may be an option in terms of uh, parking for that event as well. You'd have to, um, you know, Adam would have to give you some guidance in terms of people crossing the road to go to the event, but um, there may be space down in that neck of the woods that you hadn't, that, you know, people hadn't mentioned before. So I thought I'd mentioned it. Historically, those tents come in in uh, second weekend in August for the D2 R2 event, um, which is a bike race, okay. uh, Dirt Road Rendoni, and um, that's usually after the first round of flowers is harvested, and then they replant with a cover crop um, in that area. So that um, yacht is very generous and supports the land trust and allows them to use that area between. Um, Wells Cross, Child's Cross, um, in there, um, you know, uh, so I don't know if that's a June option. Um, I, I'd be happy to send a, a, an email number, phone contact, um, and do that. Um, Adam, is that help any beyond, the, out. Is that beyond the Little Brook, or is it the north side of the Little Brook that drains under the Little it's, Brook? It's south of there. I think I've seen them. Uh, there's a field that's got hay in it. I think north of that brook. But maybe uh, I'm yeah, I mean, there's a small little field there. I mean, like if it's dry, okay, you know, yeah. if it's dry, you can get creative with parking in Old Deerfield, okay. Um, it's it's also challenging to get parking in Old Deerfield when you have like there's things that we do for certain events at Deerfield Academy like park on both sides of Albany Road, okay? We do that for commencement. We do that for the Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Um, 
and we do sometimes both sides of people driving into the lawn on old main street. And we do those for events that people show up at the same time and leave at the same time. So that's a different type of event than having a rotating chicken barbecue with different seatings incorporated with an antique show and a squash tournament where you have different teams, different spectators coming and going. So when you have all the coming and going, it limits the ability to, you can't, you need to be able to have that two-way traffic flow. Um, you know, so, and you know, the other thing that we always try to think about when we're working with any of the people that have events in town is we want to make sure that we have a good fan experience, right? So, you know, when we work details at larger events at UMass and other stuff, like one of the biggest complaints we get is why do I have to park this far away or all this stuff? Um, and, you know, we get those firsthand because we're the bad guy that says, no, nope, can't go that way. Well, my GPS says seven Boyden lanes that way. I understand that the road's closed. It's one way. Sorry, you have to go down this gravel lot. You know, I'm sorry you paid $60,000 a year to send your student here. Tell them to invest in a parking garage. Um, but you got to take a hike. Um, so those are some of the things that we point out to people even you know, now working with Treehouse, moving forward with the fan experience, what they want people to get out of the evening and how sometimes these parking challenges can make people either not want to go back or, you know, you have to put things in place like golf carts and shuttles and stuff like that. I mean, could you have an event at Deerfield Academy and ask a farmer to rent some of their land and get a hay, couple hay wagons and transport people or school buses. Yeah, absolutely. That's a possibility. Um, but those are things you have to come and get creative with when DA says, we're expecting 29 teams with 20 players. That's 10 parent cars per player. And then, you know, and then we have the antique show and they're going to have this many people and committed to that. So we're trying to do some quick math and we know kind of how much we have. And then you have a contingency plan of, we can use grass, we can't use grass because of the weather. You know, those are things that we keep in mind because we know based on experience what a thousand people on their campus that aren't residents kind of look kind of looks like. Um, and they know that too. So, you know, for depending on the event, sometimes they're more okay with fixing grass than not. They got a lot of grass there there's definitely room it depends on you know how much they they're willing to invest on overseeding uh vehicle damage and those are questions that they can answer you know when it's commencement and when it's reunion weekend and they're a little bit more flexible on repairing grass so those are things to keep in mind and we'll look forward to to hearing back from da so we have two components we have firework parking and we have barbecue parking. Can we deal with each one separately or do we have to, I mean, all together, it's a big mess. <clears throat> but if you break it down into two components, I reach- All right, we, we're, we're, you know, at, as I understand your schedule, I mean, and this is the other thing that's more of a challenge for me, I have to tell 20 people, you can't have the day off on Saturday because we're going to do a parade and then we're going to do an after event. And then depending on what we're looking at, at numbers, thing. we have to deal with Sunday, right? So- Sunday is less impactful. I think Sunday is less impactful for DA because some of the teams get eliminated. Usually their attendance at their at historic Deerfields thing is less. I mean, we also have to provide 24 hour security for the antiques. Um, so, you know, by having multiple days, that creates another challenge with, you know, I can't work somebody 16 hours on Saturday and then expect another 16 hours out of them on Sunday. Well, Adam, one of the things we talked about was having running a shuttle service so we could have people park down here across from the elementary school or at the high school and just shuttle them back and forth for even for the fireworks. If we started it around, you know, seven o'clock or something so people could go up because we, we were talking about possibly having some um, food and stuff available. But not everybody will come for that. Was that a possibility? Is that? You know, oh, absolutely. That I mean, and that's the that's the other part, you know, when Chris sends me an email or someone sends me an email and asks for specifics, you know, I can give you a blanket. That's kind of what I'm doing, kind of like a blanket idea of what the chief and I think about when we get a request. 
but it's also harder for us to really make a plan without knowing attendance and time frames. So, and then location. So those are some of the challenges because it makes a big difference. Like Chris said, if the last squash game starts at 2 p.m. and they're, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know this. I'm just saying this. I don't know. I haven't had the time to take a deep dive into this yet. But if we know that they're going to be out per se at X time and our people are going to be in at X time, then we have a better idea of what's going to be available so we can we can better plan for that where and i understand this is challenging you know where locations of fireworks and stuff aren't nailed down and i understand that the place that they have had fireworks at da is a good place for fireworks there's no question about that i've been there and a lot of people just show up and park on mill village road it, it is what it is um, but also you're going to have, if you have well-advertised fireworks, not next to the 4th of July, you're going to have another influx of traffic. So we're looking at traffic control points at Child's Cross, at Old Main Street, at Wells Street, at 5 and 10. So those at, that's an additional traffic control spots that would, would pop up. So um <clears throat> On the chicken barbecue side, I mean, if we're looking at like 100 people at each seating, like four different seatings, like I think that's manageable. The challenge is it's on a different day. The other challenge to me, just talking with people, you know, more my age and stuff, I think it's going to be interesting or I don't think that you're going to have people do the parade, especially people with, with young kids. You're going to do the parade. Kids love the parade. Then they're going to want to do something after the parade. And I agree with Holly that if people are watching the parade in downtown South Deerfield and that's where it's going to end, then having an event at the elementary school and walking distance is going to keep people. I, I have a hard time feeling that a large amount of people watching the parade are going to transition to Old Deerfield for fireworks and then come back for a chicken barbecue the next day. Um, which to me trying to figure out a plan to fit all these cars is almost like, yeah, okay. I think we're going to have people kind of spread out. That's, that's kind of a, a, maybe a more positive, easier to handle. But I just think if people do come back to town that aren't residents that are former residents and they're with kids and they're doing something, then expecting them to spend from, you know, two to four at a parade or, you know, and then go and do something somewhere else after and then come back for a chicken barbecue the next day it seems like if there's one day they'll hit it hard they'll hit all the events but spreading out i don't i don't know as if you're going to have as strong attendance so that's just that's kind of my take on that problem. <laughs> my, my understanding is that the um sunday barbecue is like that's reunions for the school you know the frontier school reunions i think stan you had said there was like one class has already bought a, bl a block of tickets for one of the servings and, th and that's what's happening classes are buying blocks of tickets so it's not like an overwhelming number of people on sunday which seemed in the meeting on thursday it seemed like sunday was the concern that you know where all these people are going to be inundating the campus and i i don't believe so and i and it truly it seems like just from my um, conversation with Stan, that this is gonna be a controlled older groups. And that really Saturday, as, as Holly was saying, it's disappointing we can't do stuff downtown, but the groups on Saturday for the bounce houses and all that kind of stuff is, you know, having that set up and having refreshments and stuff up in Old Deerfield on sun Saturday and getting ready for the fireworks seems like it would be better because the the antique show would be shut down the you know that's i mean jeff galley seemed to have wanted us to do more things on saturday so having the antique show shut down the squash games done getting 
you know, having the bar, having food and ice cream and bounce houses and bands and everything on Saturday before the fireworks was going to be a better choice. So well, I, I hear what you're saying, Carolyn, and, and I, I don't disagree with you. I think Deerfield Academy, and like I said, I, I didn't have a, a lot of time, I think, to, to really speak with, you know, anybody at the Matt and Jeff, uh, Matt Sheehy or Jeff Galley level, but I had a few minutes to speak um, literally in the roadway with um, Tessa and Chris. Um, you know, they they are worried about some of these things. And I think, you know, one day is easier for them. Um, I don't know exactly why, but um, I, like I said, I, I'm not, you know, don't quote me on that, but that's, you know, I, I, no, I think it, it came I think. Yeah, I agree. I think we can figure it out. Um, Saturday, yeah. You know, and I and I think there's options, and I think that mm -hmm. it, you know people have to walk, but I do think um, that it would you would have better attendance if people could walk from their homes or from the end of the parade to an event. I know. I, I mean, you know, the idea of at four o'clock, you know, especially if it's hot day putting kids in the car, going someplace different um, presents a lot of challenges. So, um, you know, I just think, you know, the end of the Holyoke St. Patrick's Day Parade or the road races or stuff where people are, you know, everything is close by. So I, I, you know, like I said, I'll work with Chris and friends of Deerfield and whoever else, but if you have any other questions for me, please don't hesitate to email or ask and we'll, we'll see what we can do throughout, throughout the week. I'll, have some more time to 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 speak with them at DA about um, what they're expecting and what their needs from us are going to be for both events too. Hey Adam, where is the antique show going to be held? Is, is it uh, I believe campus? it's yeah, I believe it's in the the gym or athletic center as you call it now. Yes, yeah. that's where it is. Athletic center. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, we're looking at parking and options that are not in the upper campus we as if we've we've assumed that for saturday evening and for sunday that our lower level down tennis pavilion you know playing field level on the south side cannot be parking up on albany road um, <laughs> behind the science center behind the library that that's all dedicated to um the antique um show as well as you know some squash parking up there um as well as as well as parking right behind the dining hall and gymnasium there's a little bit of parking there but that's squash parking as far as we're concerned so you know the other thing just to say about sunday when we when we came when we identified sunday as the barbecue day and these um, staggered seatings because there's a reality of how many, how much food we can cook in any two hour period. That um, also we knew that some persons, perhaps older or that are on, you know, fixed diets and meal times. That's why we said 1 p.m. has to be the first seating because some people eat around noon time and they're not going to be able to wait till later in the day. And so that's why we started it then is because we wanted to make maximum access to all the townspeople and their guests and to um, and then also to shut the whole thing down by 8 p.m. before dark. That was Sunday thinking in terms of timing. Also, if we had to switch the fireworks to Sunday, um, there was uh, enough time for people to figure out what, what's going on. But it does seem like Deerfield wanted us to do most of the heavy, um, you know, busyness part on su Saturday. They, for whatever reason, it didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, but then um, I thought, well, it's true that most of the activities were after their activities are done. So, you know, cause the parade goes till four o'clock. 
Do you have a sense of how much or if we're liable to get any overflow from the events that are going on at Deerfield down to the events that we're planning? Well, um, the only thing is, is the kids that are involved in the squash um, <clears throat> uh, tournament, they're staying overnight on the campus. So mm -hmm. um, be there'll, be, there'll be some kids wiped out because their teams have lost, but then there'll be a certain number moving ahead for Sunday. So it would be their families and, um, you know, those kids, but there, and there is another group on campus, but I, I don't think that they will probably attend given the, the group. So um, I, I don't think there's going to be an overlap other than, you know, yeah. whoever. I'm just curious. I mean, it just, it, you know, just, in information flow out there if you don't expect much then so what are we moving forward on and what is totally muddled well as a as as a group i mean we aren't actually voting any money it's um the friends as far as timeline and yeah. well the uh, we, we would be voting for the fireworks um so that Deerfield, the friends of Deerfield could pay for the fireworks. Well, we, can I just quickly say something? Um, we had last at the last meeting we had talked about some different options, and my understanding is that the police chief said we could not use Memorial Field at all for anything. Is that everybody else's understanding? I, no, that that's not true. I mean, I was there. Uh, the chief said. He didn't think Memorial Field was big enough to host things, be, and there's no parking lot accessible. And the answer of no, you can't use Memorial Field for anything was not said. It was Frontier and Deerfield Elementary School both provide parking lots. Oh, okay. Town Hall does not have adequate parking for events. We run into this with soccer games. People come in with two kids to play soccer games, and the police department becomes inaccessible. Okay. And so that's that's why they didn't want to use that field i mean right. it was that, that was you okay. could park at deerfield elementary school and walk to memorial field mm -hmm. but we thought that there is a much bigger field on both sides of deerfield elementary school with a parking lot that it can accommodate over 150 cars but so, then i thought there was a thing that um sue antonellis wasn't really up for doing anything and so we were talking about the bouncy houses and trying not to have to move them because the additional expense for moving them from Deerfield one day up to up to Deerfield Academy the second day. Although we have no idea how many kids are actually going to show up for the barbecue because it may end up being a lot of older people. But, uh, but we have structured the barbecue and we haven't really gone live, totally live with ticket sales. That'll happen in the next week, hopefully. But we have structured the barbecue where kids 10 and under are free. Right, right. Yeah, but then you talk, we, we've been talking about providing, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers for free on Saturday to make Saturday a family friendly and accessible event for people as opposed to Sunday when they have to pay for a meal. Correct. And, and Susie is um, taking care of whatever she does for the bounce houses. She's a band or something, some kind of entertainment and whatever she does normally for home day, she is doing Saturday. Which, which, which originally was gonna be in South Deerfield. That is correct. correct. Or where in South Deerfield? Because because I've heard discussions about that's why the seeing parade it up was ending over. at Frontier that it would be too congested with parade participants and so it wouldn't be easily used for an after parade activity. So I've been hearing lots of different things here, and you know we need to resolve you know how long is it going to take people to clear out from from Frontier so that could be used. Well, the, the other option for a parade ending for floats was to send them to Pelican and yeah. reach out to the direction, director of uh, security and a vice president at Pelican. And Holly and I talked about that, that we, we said floats and we would control traffic 
on Pleasant Street. So floats could exit either north on North Main Street if they were under the pound limit, or they could exit Pleasant Street to Conway Street, or they could exit out North Main Street. This has all been discussed. We told Correct. Sue all this. Uh, we were, the chief and I were very clear when we met with her in the fall that there was ample room uh, in South Deerfield. There is ample parking in South Deerfield, and there's ample fields in South Deerfield to have any after parade activities between Memorial Field, Deerfield Elementary School, and Frontier. Um, and that, you know, we could push floats and people parking on the parade further up to Pelican. Um, and, and, and that was, was all, all clearly stated. Um, and we stand behind that. And we did say that a block party on Elm Street was not conducive to parking and traffic. Um, but we highlighted and the chief drew a map for the pros of using uh, Frontier and Deerfield Elementary School in their three adjacent parking lots with additional parking on the wide section of North Main Street from Conway Street to Pleasant Street, Bloody Brook Circle, and parking on North Main Street where it's wide from um, house number 127 to 147, uh, where there's more than enough room to park cars on one side of the road there. Um, so, um, you know, anything that we can do to help facilitate things in Old Deerfield, we will, but as far as parking congestion and um, the availability of public owned buildings that we control is all in South Deerfield. Yeah, and one, one of the thoughts too about, about trying to manage this whole thing on Saturday evening in terms of coming and going is um, if we had to move, which we do for safety dimension and clearance purposes, fireworks to Old Deerfield, we're gonna have a track of traffic flow going up there no matter what to watch the fireworks. So one of the concepts behind having post parade stuff up there is it might be a way to stagger arrivals before nine o'clock or 9.15 so they don't all pile up at 8.30. But, but I, I don't know anything about that dynamic of whether we'll still end up with a flood of people at 8.30 versus people staggered between five and 9 p.m. going up there. Yeah, I mean, it's not my forte. I, I think, as Adam said, because having been a person who has watched fireworks in other communities, if you're only going to see the fireworks, there's going to be a lot of uh, people parking along Mill Village and, you know, other roads where they think they'll have a peak of the fireworks. So you're going to have traffic in a number of places. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and we can handle that. You know, I, I'm not saying that we can't handle a, a, a influx of people. I'm I'm still going back to you know what people envision for a fan experience. So, um, you know, as far as what Deerfield Academy is willing to allow, we'll see. You know, what their approval looks like when it comes through officially. Um, you know, and what they're planning on for, um, you know, for numbers. Um, I think that that window between parade ending and fireworks could be well attended. It could be desolate. Um, people could go do their own thing. They could have a backyard barbecue. And then, you know, you could have 500 cars show up in that area to watch the fireworks. You know, it is what it is. Um, but when you have other events and things coming in and out that where is that's where not having parking lots in old Deerfield becomes a challenge, whether it's this event or any other event that happens up there. Chris, are there any other options for fireworks between old Deerfield and South Deerfield? We haven't been able to identify it to do the type of show we envisioned and um, especially because it's expensive no matter what because all the costs are higher this year. Yeah. So we we, we want to get a good show for the 350th out of it. Of course. And um, it's just Potomac Ridge and uh, you know Eagle Brook campus type location or somewhere down in those uh, <laughs> south or north meadows. 
We just don't have clearances anywhere else. It's too much has been built up over the years. Somewhere by Sand Gully Drag or something, any of that area, the fields out there, would that be an option? The, well, the issue is the issue is viewing also because, you know, I think the vision of Mount Sugarloaf was there could be multiple viewing locations everywhere, even in people's backyards for barbecues and stuff like that. Um, and then um, the best viewing option, frankly, in Old Deerfield versus Eagle Brook or DA is is DA actually if people are congregated in those lower levels. You know, like the meadows or deer, the tennis pavilion at Deerfield Academy and the playing fields, because then they can do more spectacular things at lower levels with the fireworks. Um, you know, the fireworks normally will max out at 600 feet, which is below the ridges on um, the mountains that we have, and um, majority between three and 500 feet, but they can even do creative things below 300 feet at a, at a venue like what they're saying at Deerfield Academy. Yeah, and I'll agree with Chris 100%. I mean, the fireworks location there and viewing from the south end of Old Main Street to Child's Cross is excellent. Um, there, there's no question about that as a good site for them to set off different levels of fireworks. Um, with that viewing area, which is a much less traveled street, um, what we do see and what does happen is people stop on 91 and people stop on five and 10. Uh, <laughs> yeah, gonna, going on. Five, five and 10, 91, lower road, up yep. the road, and Mill Village Road. Yep. Um, so, I mean, the, 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 the only other thing that, you know, Sugarloaf would be ideal. Um, you know, and that's the other thought that, that we had, and I only got a few more minutes to hop off, is if you did something the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving and you could get DCR to apply that, um yeah. you know uh, adam the biggest the biggest risk we run then is if we have an early winter storm which we oh. know we've had that in october and we need access to that road all the yeah. way up and around and that that would be a showstopper for the fireworks coming right just a thought we're just trying to get creative you know people enjoy fireworks 99 percent of them one percent not so much and with pets and stuff, but uh, anybody have any other questions? And I look forward to working with you guys before I take off here. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for all you've done. No yeah. problem, Holly. And, um, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we can nail down some more stuff when those mass DOT per permits come through and, yep. you know, we're good to go on that parade um, stuff. If you can get back to me on the uh, text I sent you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you sent me something about the eight a weekend of Founders Day. Correct. And yep. you, you can get to me. Yeah, you're you looking at just like 100 people or so, you think? Which um, be a big deal. Uh, well, we're expecting 350 kids to ring 350 bells. Oh, right. That's right. Be loud. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I, I, so I, I there about... will be traffic. I'm expecting more pedestrian traffic. Uh, but yep. there will be people. We wanted yep. to keep you in the nope. loop. And there's there's not a lot going on that weekend, so uh, okay. we can do that. Just so everybody knows, we got a 50 mile cancer for kids treehouse bike race on the same day as the parade. So I let them know that Sugarloaf Street would be closed, so they're going to have to alter their route. All right. <laughs> so oh, wow, wait, what? Where are they coming through town, Adam? Uh, Sugarloaf Street. <laughs> So, so they 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 have to clear it with you. So obviously, yeah, no. I they, said no. Sorry, you can't. No, Sugarloaf Street I, will be closed. What time did were they planning to come through? Uh it's a fifty mile ride kicking off. Staggered starts from eight a.m. to ten a.m. So I don't know how. I'm not the fastest bicycler, but I would think that if you're pedaling fifty miles and coming back, you'd probably be back in town between two and four. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't know anybody. Anybody bike fifty Was miles? How fast to go? <laughs> ten, ten, mi 10, 12 miles an hour. You leave at seven thirty-eight. You're probably back in about five hours, which is about when the parade kicks off. Okay. Oh man. So. 
we'll we'll deal with it. And, See you later. Uh, <laughs> like I said, anybody reach out, and I'll I'll follow up with Chris and DA and. Um, both Chris Harris and Chris McDougall and and see how that works out. Okay. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Have a good night. Yep. Thanks. Well, it doesn't seem to me there's much question about where we can and can't have the fireworks. That seems to be set. So I'm I'm not sure where we are with the the afternoon. I mean I'm Personally, I'd like to have it down here too, but I see I just don't see that being much of an option anymore. But um, I think we've got to make a decision pretty soon. We just, you know, we we can't put this off, keep putting it off for two weeks because we haven't decided. Well, I think the fireworks, we don't really have much choice on fireworks. It's not going to happen at DCR. So Chris can certainly go ahead and do the contract. I think what is up in the air is some of these other events, but honestly, I, you know, we're not gonna have, uh, it. we can't do stuff downtown, I don't think. So do we have a guarantee from Deerfield Academy that they want everything on Saturday? You know, I don't know. I, I, I can understand why they want the staggered, potentially staggered, influx in town and the events aren't going to even start till you know after the parade anyway so i can understand why they want everything on saturday i guess but i don't the the kind of action that's going to happen on sunday for the barbecue is like you know class reunions and you know more adult not so much kid stuff i mean kid if if people bring their kid you know grandchildren but i don't I, if we want kid stuff, it still, I think it has to be on Saturday. And it seemed like in the meeting, they wanted stuff on Saturday versus Sunday. So I, I think the sell job to Deerfield Academy for Sunday's events is that it's not going to be hugely disruptive. It's going to be an older, quieter crowd, and it's going to be more sedate versus, you know, people are having a good time at the parade and they're getting ready for the fireworks. And so this is your activities in between. So I think it's gonna be more stuff happening on Saturday versus Sunday, but I don't know. We'll have to look at the ticket sales, I guess, for the barbecue so that they have sort of an idea of how many people would come. But I don't, I just don't see that as really being a problem set Sunday night or late Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we're working off of numbers where we estimated 300 up there um, on Saturday evening before the fireworks. It could go higher as you get closer to the fireworks, but 300 in terms of you know people that would be around there for a lot of time would where we'd have hot dogs and hamburgers and ice cream and sodas for them, you know that type of uh, estimate. And then on Sunday, a maximum of 600 over the three different seatings. 200 max each seating. That's all we can handle in terms of chicken, cooking, you know, staggered. Holly? But Chris, Chris, um, but if on Sunday there's 200 for, you're saying the maximum that the caterer can provide food for, but did you also say hot dogs and hamburgers on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, so for kids, we assume that they might not eat chicken, so we have to have some amount of, and we were thinking 100 plus of kids that for hot dogs and hamburgers as an alternative. And is the caterer doing that as well? Yep, yeah, because anything, okay, so here's where we draw the line. We're, we're going to have volunteers, you know, Susie has talked about her rec committee. We've talked about the volunteers we can get. Etc. But volunteers can hand out things like sodas and bags of chips and things like that. But any open food, any open food items will be handled, prepared and served by the caterer because of health, health care issues. And, and the caterer has to negotiate all that with the health agent of the town. 
and make sure that all our precautions are taken. So, so from you know friends of Deerfield standpoint, we're not getting volunteers involved in any open food because we're not qualified. We're just not qualified and trained. And, well, you have to have a surf safe certificate to handle the food, and the caterer would have that. Whereas um, very few regular volunteers are safe surf certified. Right. Yep. But but that could enhance your numbers is what I'm getting at. So if a family decides, well, we only have to buy two chicken barbecue tickets for mom and dad, and they have three children, um, they can feed the kids for free, um, then that's going to really push the numbers up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll push the numbers, but it won't push the number of cars. Okay. Yeah, so that we, we looked at it that way. In terms of cars, we, we, we think there'll be more carpooling, if you will, on Sunday, you know, in that respect. Yeah. The same could be said for Saturday if they come up there to watch fireworks. Usually they load the whole family in the car and go watch the fireworks, right? Yeah. But, but you really are only anticipating 500 people coming up for fireworks? We, we actually said 300 that would be there for a substantive amount of time and want food and, and dessert. Yeah. If, oh, if, if, were... if that's if that's under cooking it, that's easily adjustable. And let's be honest, hamburgers, hot dogs, and ice cream are not the highest cost items. We can we can up the number and cover it budget wise. Yeah, you might want to check it in with a local community like Greenfield that has the annual yep. fireworks because I think they get way more. I've been there every year. They have a ton of people, but they open up the whole schoolyard uh, below Beacon Field. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's a whole day event right below the field. Yeah. So may, they may have about 1,000 people at least, but it's been an ongoing event in that field at least. So, so what, what are we definitely able to say we're doing? We're going to definitely do... The Sunday barbecue, and what are our variables? We've got to figure out what we are. We got to figure. We can't. Well, right now, Deerfield wants us to do everything on Saturday, including the fireworks. So, um, including the chicken barbecue. No, the but chicken barbecue is on Sunday. Practice. That'll stay on Sunday. Okay. So this is the hot dogs, hamburgers, ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bouncy houses uh little ban um the stuff that Susie normally does for like home day it would be happening on saturday and that seems to be what they wanted everything to be happening on saturday because they're all their events shut down you know in the five or six o'clock hour where ours are just starting up there was what the discussion was or what they were worried about is too much activity on sunday especially at the early seating of the chicken barbecue. That's what's still up in the air and that has not been committed to by Deerfield Academy at this point. And we really can't, we don't think logistically we can move the chicken barbecue because it's too complicated and it has to be staggered and we want it accessible to all ages of the town. And so it was an afternoon event. It was never scheduled to be an evening event. Never right. thought of that way. That isn't what people asked us for. Because Friends of Deerfield responded to people that generated these ideas and brought them to us. This didn't come from us. This came from people of the town that thought this would be a great idea if we could pull this off. Right. And, and I think we can. I just, you know, it needs more discussion and work with Deerfield on how much logistics time. of how we're going to manage the seatings um, for that Sunday. They'll figure it, it out. When it, when it became a Sunday, Saturday, Sunday event is when there was some concern, but it, their choice was for us to do everything on sun, on Saturday. But their, but their choice initially, and they, Deerfield Academy knows this very well, is we only were focused on Sunday for the chicken barbecue. Right. And then we had to shift 
location of fireworks. We had to think about how do you marry that up with post parade pre fireworks activities. So then we were going to then to Saturday thinking Saturday was the issue. Actually, Sunday is the issue. But for two and a half months, we've been contracting with vendors because of our understanding with Deerfield Academy. We've dispersed thousands of dollars to vendors already for Sunday reservations. Right. <laughs> can we proceed with Sunday then? Is Sunday muddled or can we proceed with Sunday? I, I think we have to wait, truthfully, until Deerfield Academy agrees on the Sunday, you know, what, how we're going to handle Sunday. So I I feel like what we, what Chris needs to know is can he find, sign the contract for the fireworks? I, I think we can sign the contract for the fireworks. There's not an issue right now with the fireworks being up in Old Deerfield. That is drought a good site and if we have drought conditions that's a good site so we can move that forward we can move whatever sue's doing for um that saturday night pre event because deerfield i mean uh, friends of deerfield have already decided that they're going to fund those things for free and um and make it a family events and the bounce houses will already be set up for sunday so it's not again and, and with porta potties that they're already paying for. So this is not going to be um hugely expensive, which would they haven't with some more money that's already been outlaid. So I don't really I think we can go ahead and advertise those events, but you know, we just need to hold off a little bit on the barbecue on Sunday until we get the final word from Deerfield Academy on Sunday, because that seems to be the date they have problems with the early seating. We might have to start later. Uh, Stan had 14 tickets from one class that's already been pre-sold, but you know we may have to do free drink, You know, do your seating, the second seating, and we just do a, a more graduated later seatings. Um, you know, that could happen too. We can adjust some of those things on for Sunday if we have to. But I, th I think that they can be worked out because I don't see hordes of people um, that are disrespectful coming to Deerfield Academy in the afternoon on Sunday for the barbecue. I think it's gonna be specific class people, you know, frontier class people. So reunion stuff. Holly? Carolyn, what is the issue they have with Sunday and the early seating specifically? Because it's the finishing up of the squash tournament. They're not sure when that's going to end. And um, they still have the antique show open until I think it's five o'clock on Sunday. So right. we were having the barbecue. The first seating, I think Stan said, Stan said that the first one is at one o'clock. So they have a problem with the one to say five time frame right now. But Chris, if you don't have it on Sunday, you're, you, I mean, you basically would have to kill it because you can't do it on Saturday. So no, because because we don't want to compete with the parade. We wanted to respect. Right. No, I I, I get it. So, you know, yeah. so yeah, no, no, it's no. either Deerfield says yes, you can do it, or you spent a lot of money already and we're kind of screwed. And the reason we chose, the, we wanted to identify a venue and I had talked to Deerfield about keeping that great tent up from the reunions the prior weekend. That wasn't possible because it was already uh, contracted for by another uh, institution. Yeah. Um, is we wanted to make sure we could have it under cover in case there's rain. To be sure. perfectly honest, never mind if it's extremely hot and sunny, the, the cover actually helps people also. Yeah. And so we, we don't have another venue where we could go to like that, of that size and flexibility. Yeah. So basically, the fireworks looks okay. The chicken barbecue looks okay if DF is fine with it, but otherwise there's no alternative. So I would say push forward on as best you can with the chicken barbecue as well. Yeah, well, 
that's our intention. I, I feel like there, whatever issues we can be accommodating enough to, and sort it out because I, I don't really feel like this is a wild, huge, unorganized event. It's, it's, it's just like the gala ran really well. Everything was organized. I, I feel like this is the same kind of thing. It's very organized, contained event. And our event is on the lower level playing fields and everything else at Deerfield is happening at the upper campus. Yeah. And we're not going to mess with their upper campus. No. So. no toilets, no nothing, no parking, nothing up there. Do we proceed? I, okay, I'm still confused. Is Sue Antonellis doing events or is she not doing events? Because yeah, yes, no, I she thought did. she was not doing anything and then we've been planning stuff and then she comes in and says she doesn't want to do that. So is she planning stuff or are we planning stuff? She was in the meeting on Thursday and she has agreed to do the bounce houses and, and activities on Saturday at the post parade, you know, time frame. At a Deerfield, Deerfield Academy. Academy. Yes. But she wanted an open, she wanted a bar, which we were not planning on having. And she wanted a live band as opposed to a DJ that we've already lined up. So how's that going to get resolved? The select board voted to have her do home day, old home day style, whatever she was doing. So she's in charge of those activities and however they turn out is is what's going to happen Marie? okay okay so then guys what are we doing then are we going to do the hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff or or not yeah i mean yeah it's as we discussed in our last board meeting we're still going to support with all that and we have flexibility and we're going to talk to sue about at least a wine and beer bar maybe with just to cut off time enough in advance of getting ready for fireworks so we don't have people walking around the, the lawns, the playing fields with drinks at that point. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we need a band. I don't think we should have a DJ. Especially a high school DJ. I don't know. I mean, we're attracting, we want to, I mean, I felt that we wanted to attract families. That's why we're having the bounce houses. And those families want a band. Um, I mean, I think we I, I should think, have a band. I, I think if we can secure a band, which we found very difficult to do for for uh, Sunday, the chicken barbecue, if we can secure a band for Saturday, fine. It will cost more, but we have to find one first that's suitable. I'll find a band. Okay. I can find a band. Okay. Good for you, sir. I don't I don't think we have to worry about it. It sounds like it sounds like the friends of Deerfield have it and are working with Susie and Deerfield Academy. Um so it, it will be fine. What's the time frame for do you figure for the after parade? Is it like four four to four thirty is when sort of wrap ups and we're looking at five to yeah. nine or something like that? Well the the I think the fireworks is like at 9 15 ish or 9 10. Fireworks like will go off at 9 30 because it's oh, one okay. of the longest days of the year now that we're a week later. So 9 30 to 9 50 would be the fireworks. We're thinking that all the post parade pre um, fireworks would be ideally 5 to 9 p.m. Okay. And we're so thinking you've got some, you've got some time thinking, between. We're yeah, thinking we would serve to get not to get into the weeds here, but we're thinking we would serve food, hot dogs and hamburgers from six to eight and ice cream from seven to nine. That's excellent. And and it will be free. So we're hoping that people will come and you know families will come. And, and I so I think so. I mean it would be a lovely event, I think. Once the other thing too is that with the parking, if it's fairly closed, people may just come and tailgate and eat, you know, eat on the back of their cars too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So do we proceed? Well, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of plans already made. Do we just proceed? 
We can always do parking charts ahead of the time, make sure people know where they can and can't go. Whether or not we deal with shuttles or anything like that, we let's proceed and, and, and iron out the small details as we get closer. But Chris seems to have put a lot of work into this. A lot of people have put a lot of work into this. We've thought of many different options, the mountain, Deer, Old Deerfield, South Deerfield. Um, Kelly, we want Kelly to put an ad in the paper for us. I thought that's what we were going to be doing today as opposed to watching it blow up again. So yeah, we can't uh, do any advertising yet. Exactly, exactly, until we, we have things resolved. So the only thing we have is I think that's unresolved is Chris has to just talk to DA to to say, are we are we good with this? And everything else, can we proceed as planned? And just fine tune it. I think so. I, I think I think we are at that point. Yeah. We need to be. Me too. Yeah, we need and to. And I think it will be sorted out this week. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Matt Sheehy was supposed to call me today, apparently, and he didn't. So, um, but I know I'm going to see him on Wednesday. So if he hadn't called me by Wednesday, I will talk to him on Wednesday. Thank you. I vote we proceed as planned. I'll second that. All those in favor? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what we're voting on. Okay. Um, everything we've been discussing. Well, I know that, but we don't have a motion. <laughs> and, and, and frankly, I'm not voting on Friends of Deerfield's agenda items. Okay. I'm voting on steering committee items. Okay. Well, what we're doing, Holly, is giving uh, permission for Deer, Friends of Deerfield to move forward with what, how their expenditures, they're, they're presenting us a plan of their expenditures for the fireworks, for the uh, post parade activities, and then the barbecue on Sunday. And all we're doing is saying, thank you. We love it. Go ahead. And if we don't love it? Then just vote no. Okay. We lost Peter. Did we lose Peter? Yeah. We lost Peter. But I mean, I would love to see the fireworks on top of the mountain. Um, but Diane, it's, it's yeah. not going to happen. Uh, the, the, yeah, I know. The, oh, I know. That's why Falcon, the Falcon well, pair should have had a nest the first week of, yep. of March. And we, you know, DCR was very, very good. They kept considering it. We yep. thought, they had three meetings to reconsider our request. So, yeah. but the fact is there's no net, there's no nesting happen right now. And this, this is March 13th. We have a snowstorm tomorrow. So, you know, maybe the snow will be melted and it will warm up by next week. I mean, I've even thought of our hay fields, but it's like, we might be bailing in the middle of that. And I wouldn't want to set the field on fire with all the dry hay. So there, you know, Chris has been researching. I know he's been looking around and yeah, we, we, you do what you can. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Is, is Peter, do you want me to um, see if Peter can get back on? Oh, I'll go find Peter. I'll go upstairs and find Switch Peter. Chairs. <laughs> oh, just, just tell him to come down so he can vote. <laughs> yeah. He's got to do a roll call vote. It's not coming out the way we envisioned, but we were aiming. We were aiming rather high for what we could do, but I, I thought we were in pretty good shape together. because we had, uh, you know, record warmth in January and February, so we're on track to have them nest early. But you know, I got cold at the end of February, and we have had snow ever since. So uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, just to add to that, the apparently one of the postmarks was not approved. Really? Yeah, it, Marie was told it was, and it wasn't. So it, it wasn't because of how it was done, or some of the design elements. Can so it be brought into compliance. It can, but we're trying to get verification because we're being told so many different things. Oh my God. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so crazy. I know. <laughs> I know. So this is the South Deerfield. Deerfield's approved and the stamps being made. So there's progress. Um, it's South Deerfield. So that's a challenge. Is that because we don't have a postmaster there? It, yeah, it's uh, the, the, the woman that's covering, I think is covering different locations. She's pulled thin, you know, she relies on Robin a lot, which is great, but I'm getting different information that Robin's getting. So it's, it's just communication's not great. Oh, man. Okay. Then I'm hoping to go back to the artist, make the tweaks, and hopefully we can move it along. I'm just worried about the timing at this point. Yeah, I know. Mm. Got a yep. full year. We'll just keep on like, going along. You. Well, hopefully, because we started the process on a timely basis, they will expedite any adjustment that needs to be done to meet compliance because. Um, you know, certainly you approached it in the right time frame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, if they didn't get back to you with an issue, that's really not on us. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Kelly. It's okay. <laughs> no, I am too. I'm losing sleep <laughs> here and there. Over well, we're all going to go to bed with headaches tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Come on, Peter. House isn't that big. Find that guy. <laughs> no. Well, you're here. Come on. So you're down there. All right. So I'm down at I'm I'm on Marie's computer. What do you need at this point? We we need you to do a roll call vote to um, acknowledge the work that um, friends of Deerfield are doing for the um, post parade activities at Deerfield Academy the fireworks and the barbecue on Sunday. I just, I want to understand this, acknowledge how, like that they're, that the, they're we, going, that they're going to continue planning. Yes, that we have they the agreed to, How about they move ahead with the existing plans to do all those three events? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All we're, we're doing as a steering committee is saying, yes, go ahead with your plans. We agree that that is a sanction activity. Second it. But understanding that it may not, that there could be something. We yeah. still we have yeah. still do not have a firm commitment. Okay. For, All right. I just want to be clear Sunday. what I'm voting on. For Sunday. Sunday could still be an issue as far as three sittings of for the barbecue. Okay. So could somebody state the motion just clearly? I made the motion that we sanction the activities of Friends of Deerfield for post parade fireworks on Sunday, on Saturday, and the barbecue on Sunday, knowing that we do not have firm commitment from Deerfield Academy for the three sittings on the barbecue on Sunday. Okay, we that still needs to be worked on Holly. Well, but just they're they're given they're instructed to continue to negotiate all three of those events. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Can I second? All right. Second. All those in favor? Diane. Aye. Aye, Aye. Diane. Kelly. Aye. Carolyn. Holly. Uh -oh. Yes. Myself. Yeah. All right. It's unanimous. Thank you all for that. Thanks, Renzo Deerfield. <laughs> well, and and so, Chris uh, Harris, I think it's critically important when we get this sorted out, or Stan, or Alex, we need to communicate to Kelly immediately so that she can start putting together the advertising, because I think, in my from attending that meeting, the activity that they were concerned about was the one o'clock seating. So if we have to go down to just two or we do something different to accommodate their concerns, we need to communicate to Kelly what the final solution is as soon as you get agreement with Deerfield so that she can do the advertising, start doing advertising. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, hey, Kelly. Who created, created the flyer that you sent along? It was very nice. Very nice. That actually was the um, girlfriend of my nephew. Is it something where they could create ads for us? Because otherwise, we would have to go to the newspaper and see if they could create it. And I don't know if yeah, it costs so, to be. Yeah, so, 
So that's exactly the idea is when I talk to Rachel, uh, she's worked with me on other nonprofits. So it's kind of like a family thing, if you will. Um, and so, so the idea is the spinoff of that PDF could be 24 inch by 36 inch posters. It could be eight and a half by 11 flyers that we post in local businesses. It could be um, the mailers, like type of direct mailers that you could put in people's, um, not in their mailboxes, but at their door um, handles, as well as on their windshields. You could hand them out at the transfer station. And the same file could be the electric file that, that you could talk to a Suzanne Hunter at Greenfield Recorder about also. Uh -huh. Those posters are nice. The real nice presentation. And, and so what you do, you alter the bottom piece that talks about the specific sub-event within the overall 350? Yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things we probably have to clarify that have already been brought up to me, just details, just a couple of words and stuff. But um, we were trying to look for feedback from all of you for, uh, you know, just is there content missing? Of course, we need to pin down everything before we could go live with something like that. But the idea, Kelly, is that you could take that PDF and go to Suzanne and say, oh, let's look at it on a quarter page. How mm -hmm. could you fit this to a quarter page? And in color, what would it look like in terms of cost or 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 likewise? That's what I've done in the past with things yeah. I even created. No, that's perfect. It's a good starting point. Yeah. Very catchy. I'm, I'm concerned that I knew tonight was our night that we would have things finalized and we could move forward with publicity because the parade work group met last Monday and we're meeting again next Monday. And our goal is to have advertising out and or the date that we know it's going to be out. So how long before we get some finalization that we can do some joint advertising? Because I'm just concerned the parade is, it's three months and we we want to do it twofold because we want to hope to get some help. We want to, you know, generate the interest. If we've missed a business or two along the way, we want to make sure, you know, they're aware of what's going on. So, Knowing it would be one to two weeks out, I'm almost thinking the parade might need to do something independent if it's going to be that long. Um, I think that if we can't get consensus with Deerfield Academy literally in the next day or two, that that doesn't bode well. We should be able to get consensus. And some people were traveling, <laughs> they're back in town now. Um, so I think they'll be able to give us a little bit of time between tomorrow and Wednesday, okay. and uh, and then and then in terms of any modifications to this proof, I'll call it the anyone has, I I can get Rachel to turn those around overnight probably. I I wouldn't say it would be too much of a. I mean, it really would be by sometime in the next couple of days. And, you know, Matt was just gone on Friday um, when we had our meeting, so we couldn't get any confirm. You know, there was no one. Uh, with authority enough to make the final decision. Okay. Um, Holly, I had two things that I wanted to let you know, follow up. Um, I talked to the town accountant and she has updated our fund account. She had just forgot to add the money in. So our <laughs> fund account right now is $63,335.78. In the 350. So there's plenty of um, if there's any concern. Chris, Chris, Chris Harris has said at the end of the year, you know, that they want some money left over in the Friends of Deerfield, but they were not going to have an excessive amount so that he would put the money back into the account. So um, from Friends of Deerfield. So I clearly you have enough to cover. And that was the intent at town meeting was to give you access to the money which would happen before um you know the june 30th time frame okay. good thank you um and the other thing is that the meeting on friday i was able to confirm that deerfield academy actually has no call golf carts they rent them for their events 
So if you wanted, I can get you the, Tessa told me that I could get the contact company for, um, for you. It, I, I just have to call her back. Um, we've, we've already got one quote that we're working with, so. Okay. All right. But they don't, I, actually they don't own any, they rent them themselves. Okay, thanks. Yep. Hey, Holly, just as long as you've got you on the line, uh, did you get my email back about being reimbursed for the uh, expenses? No. When uh, did you send that? A couple of days ago. No. Um, I put I put the request through already, and uh, I said that you would drop the originals by the office, but that should close it out. Let me did know you, if it doesn't work. Did you message me? Yeah, I'll mit I'll send it to you again. Huh, okay, thanks. Yep. Carolyn? Yes. Do we have access to the congregational church and the bells? And the well, bells? we're still working on that because there is not a straightforward occupancy permit. Chances are we could get a temporary occupancy permit, but the issue is I, where where is the exact path and where where is it going to I mean number one the bell is the bell seems to be connected to the clock no it's they're independent the they're clock ind is there's a hammer that rings the the bell for the clock there's a rope that pulls to ring the bell okay and so what's the path can you come in the front door Yep, you can come in the front door up the side stairs and enter the room with the rope. Okay, so the room with the rope is on the first floor? It's on the second floor. It's on the, it's above the foyer as you come into the church. Is that the room, the room the organ was in? No, total end, the other end of the church. No. Um, it's I right below the, it's right below the tower. Okay, what? The building, <laughs> the building commissioner, Bob Walden, said that he would go into the building and look at the route that the kids would take to the bell ringing. Um, one of the other things that was suggested is there's, the, of course, the Brick Church in Old Deerfield, the uh, Holy Family name in South Deerfield, the Ukrainian one, and I think their street one. Anyway, there's like four of them that maybe all the bells could ring at once. Um, well, that, you could uh, do that, fewer of them. I actually mm, talked to the someone, Deerfield Academy headmaster uh, about Deerfield Academy folks ringing the church, the brick store, I mean, the brick church uh, bell in, in old Deerfield. Okay, well, I was, people approached me and said, well, how about all invo including all the churches and that they felt like, why are we just doing the second, second congregational church? And I said, the well, whole, the whole so thing started with the fact that that bell has been used for over a hundred years to ring in major events. And there's graffiti all over the wall up there that indicates that. No, I, I don't, you know, go ahead. No, I, that, I, that's I, the, agree, that's how I it started. the library was probably going to do some event. And what was lovely was that, you know, the friends of Deerfield were, was going to give out ice cream or something for the kids to, in coordination with the event at the library. I said, that is as far as I know. And, you know, but uh, it was some hard feeling that the other churches weren't involved. So Diane, we can do this, talk about this off, off, yeah. um, because it was all supposed to be between the library and the church, 350 bells, 350 kids signing a log book that goes into the time capsule, uh, family picnic, the whole thing. But it was uh, all the all the planning we've done. In fact, the kids uh, would actually. I went to DES the other day and. As a field trip, the kids are going to walk across the field from the grammar school to the church to present the bells, hang the bells up somewhere for presentation. Um, and th th that's just the way. Well, it gonna, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to work with the building commissioner to try to get that sorted out. Okay. Yeah. Diane. 
You and I will work on that, yeah. okay? You can do, yeah, totally deal. Peter's working on his talk. You can deal with me if you want for a while. Um, they even, the grammar school wants to be in for March 23rd to see what it looks like. Um, I told her we'd have to get back to her on that one. Yeah. A little close on time, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> I uh, mean, the, the grammar school is all in on this. I mean, I even the fact that they were into, let's have the, the kids, yeah, let them walk over with the bells. And if it rains, they could put the bell in their coat. You know, so I'm like, yay, they want to do this. And that's an advantageous place with a I, great bell. I know, I agree. I'm, Molly, you want to say something? I just wanted to ask, are we done our agenda? Because I can't stay on much longer. Okay, uh, I think so. Yeah, okay. um, Diane, you have my number, right? Yeah, well, um, house number, yeah. um, no, not my house number, my um, cell. Um, I mean, we've, we've got a we've got a way to the uh, advertising. We've we've already talked to you know Kelly, and that's been dealt with. So I think we're we're at the end of the agenda. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I, I have something. Okay. I have want something really quick. Um, I spoke to whoever's in charge of the Northfield 350th about the softball game. They contacted oh, me about nice a Deerfield. Yeah. Yeah, about a Deerfield versus um, Northfield softball game, and I talked to her today, and so um, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to reach out with Facebook or to the police and the uh, EMTs and the fire department and teachers and see if we can put a team together. I think they want the game in August, sometime in the middle of August. Yeah. Oh, Susie, that's great! What a fun so, thing! Thank you. We'll do something like that. See if we can find some people to put that together. That's great. Super. Thanks. Thanks for responding, Sue. I really appreciate it. Yes. You're welcome. Oh, I have, a, I have a question. So with this advertising and publicity, um, are we going to have to wait two more weeks till we meet again to okay whatever publicity we have? Or no. are we going to make a motion to give Kelly the discretion to work with the template of what she has and tweak it as necessary so we can get something out there. We can we can vote on it if you wish. I'm fine with that. I thought we had the consensus was Chris was going to give information to Kelly and we were moving forward. Okay, we, but we didn't vote on that. Do we need to? Because we're going to spend money for advertising. Okay. I'll make a motion to um, allow Kelly and Chris to sort out the advertising and get it out the door as absolutely as fast as possible. I second that. I agree. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Holly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Diane. Hi, Peter. Okay. Kelly, I take it you're in? All right. I'm mute. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I need to go to bed. <laughs> I still have to finish the report. <laughs> All right. Uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Carolyn. And and um, and also I'll do it simultaneously because you're going to vote on yours, but. I'll make a motion that the Friends of Deerfield adjourn their meeting also. And I'll I, second. I think Diane and Kelly are the only people that I didn't say yes to the yes. us. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're, we're adjourned. And okay. Friends of Deerfield the same. At what time? Bye.